moment to call this meeting to order. If you, everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, members present this evening are myself, Mayor Marl, Council Members Gearbaugh, Saibo Koenig, Rhodes, Tahar, and Dillon. From City Staff, we have City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, City Treasurer Bennett, Police Chief Rennick, and I believe Parks and Rec Director Scruggs is also here this evening. I uh, want to welcome everyone in the audience this evening. Um, we will start with the um, swearing in of myself and three council members, and then we will proceed to the annual State of the City Address. You are welcome to stay for all or any of that. And um, please, again, help yourself to some refreshments in the back. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Clerk Roy, we're going to start with the swearing in of, you want to start with council members or mayor? It, he's got all of them, so. It's Your Honor, what would you? It does not matter to me, Mayor, but the first one on the list is Janet Dillon. Well, let's start with Janet Dillon, our newest council member. <laughs> okay. Janet, if you want to come forward. And Judge Connor, thank you for being here this evening. We appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me. It's always a good way to start the new year. And Janet, if any of your family wants to come up, they're welcome to do so. Not a requirement, but. I think Janet would like to stand right here. Oh, come on. He said it's okay. Okay. <laughs> I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Michigan. That I will faithfully, faithfully perform the duties of the Office of Council Member two-year term, two term, beginning January 5th, 2015, January 5th, 2015, in and for the City of Saline, County of Washington, County of Washington and the State of Michigan, State of Michigan according, to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, for helping God. Solemnly swear or affirm, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Michigan. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the State of Michigan. I will faithfully perform the duties. I will faithfully perform the duties of the office of council member. Of the office of council member. Two-year term. Two-year term. Beginning January 5th, 2015. In January 5th, 2015. In and for the city of Saline. In and for the city of Saline. County of Washington. County of Washington. State of Michigan. State of Michigan. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Swear or affirm. I do swear. solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Michigan. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the State of Michigan. That I will faithfully perform the duties. That I will faithfully perform the duties of the office of mayor. Of the office of mayor. Two-year term. Two-year term. Beginning January 5th, 2015. Beginning January 5th, 2015. In and for the city of Saline. In and for the city of Saline, County of Washington, County of Washington, State of Michigan, State of Michigan, to the best of 
my ability, to the best of my ability, so, so help me God. Okay, quickly before the State of the City address, I would seek a motion at this time to approve the agenda as submitted. So moved. Moved by Council Member Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Seibel Koenig. All those in favor of the agenda uh, being approved as submitted signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. And at this time I would seek a motion to excuse the absence of Council Member Roth. So moved. So moved by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Gearbaugh. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. Okay. Move on now to the annual State of the City address. Good evening. City Council, City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, uh, Washtenaw County Clerk Kessenbaum, Judge Counter, uh, former Representative Burns was in the audience earlier, distinguished guests, and my fellow citizens. It is an honor to be here this evening, and I'm humbled and eternally grateful to the citizens of Saline for their support and for allowing me the opportunity to serve as mayor for another two years. The opportunity for me is more than just being able to be mayor, it's about being collaborative and leading this community towards a better future. Two years ago, in my first State of the City address, I shared my belief that our community was at a fork in the road. Across our state and nation, the role of municipal government was and is changing, evolving, and in some cases, fundamentally. I also talked about how our cause was too important and time was too precious to waste a moment. During the last two years, bold and decisive action has been taken by this council, this city government, and community stakeholders to move Celine forward. In every action, we made data-driven decisions based on current realities and with the best interest of the community's long-term viability in mind. We didn't consider issues based on what was popular. We took steps that would be good for the community in the long term. Primary to our effort uh, in creating a community is adequately supporting public safety. In recent years, we've added new personnel, invested in new vehicles, purchased new recording devices and AED machines with the support of a generous community benefactor. Our police chief and our fire chief and many other community leaders have taken an active leadership role in the Saline Community Substance Abuse Prevention Task Force, which is working diligently to draft a strategic plan to clarify and focus efforts to combat substance abuse, substance abuse excuse me, and addiction in our community. Although the initial statistics show that Saline's abuse rates are low, clearly substance abuse is dangerous to an individual and catastrophic to a community. I truly believe that every community member has great value and great purpose, and it's simply inexcusable for a life to be destroyed because of addiction. Finally, it's my goal to work with council to make sure our police department is adequately staffed. That means a quality dispatcher, two officers, and a supervisor on every shift. That's not just good for the public safety, it's good for our officer safety as well. Also of crucial importance is responsibly managing city finances, and it's been an exciting two years on this front. 
We are all very proud of the upgrade in Celine's bond rating from A plus to double A by Standard & Poor's, a dramatic upgrade and a direct result of some of the important steps we've taken in recent years. Since January 2013, Celine has adopted and implemented a fund balance, fund balance policy. Excuse me. We have experienced a burgeoning fund balance, growing for the first time in many years. We also have a policy that outlines how we as a city will financially support community events that enrich the lives of our residents. Finally, a bond refinancing will save Celine citizens hundreds of thousands of dollars. I want to thank my colleagues for supporting the return of Rec on the Go, a summer program for kids with an important integration of arts, reading, health, and fitness. During the economic recession of the past decade, many city government positions were eliminated via attrition or layoff when absolutely necessary. We've recently added much needed positions at the Department of Public Works, and I would like to see a return of a code enforcement officer. If the funds are available and if it's deemed appropriate, I hope my council colleagues will work with me to reestablish this important position. Our most recent budgets are a reflection of our values and our priorities, and we are clearly conservative and have exercised restraint. Rest assured that this council and city staff will remain good financial stewards and will continue to scrutinize and evaluate every program and service to see if there's opportunity for improved cost savings and efficiencies. In the coming months and years, the city will continue to explore and find ways to manage our city's pension liability, an issue of paramount importance. Recently, the city made some important long-term investments in our infrastructure, including road projects on Saline River Drive, Woodland Drive, and the heart of our industrial park in Ann Arbor Street. This past summer, we completed a small but important project on South Lewis. The last project became possible because of some flexibility in our approach. And I hope that this more creative approach can continue into the future, especially for smaller projects that might not otherwise be possible. The city is doing preliminary work on the reconstruction of North Harris, a project that will commence in, early, in the early summer of 2015. Clearly, my friends, the most time-sensitive and important infrastructure project the city is dealing with is MDOT's Michigan Avenue makeover, or the reconstruction of US 12 Michigan Ave in 2016. This project will coincide with the enhancement uh, and modernization, excuse me, of our downtown streetscape, which is nearing the end of its useful life. The project will have a lasting impact on this community for decades to come, and as such, council staff and numerous community stakeholders are working with a consulting firm and the Michigan Department of Transportation to plan and coordinate this the best we can. There are a number of issues that remain in flux, and many decisions will be made in short or order. Excuse me. However, there will continue to be ample opportunity for citizens to provide feedback and comment throughout the process. Residents will probably notice larger winter tax bills due to county government utilizing Public Act 283 of 1909 to raise funds for county roads. Accordingly, Celine will receive funds and we will put those funds to good use. However, this will in no way diminish our efforts to find long-term and sustainable funding source sources, or source, excuse me, for our roads and infrastructure projects. And our efforts to improve public transportation and connectivity will also continue in the coming year. It goes without saying that economic development is, integral, is an integral component to Celine's success. We have a history of engaging and communicating aggressively with businesses of all sizes in an effort to address questions they may have, but also to facilitate relationships that may prove mutually beneficial. This will continue in the years to come, and because of our efforts, we have received recognition from the University of Michigan-Dearborn and the E-Cities as one of the best communities in Michigan to grow and to start your business. I'm very proud of Council's work on behalf of the personal property tax reform during 2014. The new law will undoubtedly help Michigan businesses, both large and small, and Council's advocacy on this issue resulted in overwhelming support by Saline voters this past August. I have communicated with the leadership of the LDFA TIFA Task Force, which was charged with updating the city's industrial park development plans, modernizing Celine's promotional materials, and identifying short and long-term strategies that will result in new economic development opportunities. I am hopeful the task force will reconvene and formalize their recommendations for, immediate and, for the immediate and distant future. Finally, the Code and Ordinance Review Task Force continues to work hard to strengthen some policies 
but also simplify and uh, remove some re regulations that may prove or that may have proved, excuse me, overly burdensome on businesses and our citizens. In fact, council will be, will be reviewing some initial recommendations from the task force later this month or in early February. If business owners or residents have suggestions for the task force, I would encourage you to email the members at crtaskforce at cityofsaline.org. Our financial well-being and the economy's success are contingent on this community continuing to grow. And that's why I'm excited that the former Houghton School property will soon be developed. It appears increasingly likely that more homes will be added to the Huntington Woods subdivision. After a few issues are resolved, I'm hopeful that we will be able to sell the city's Monroe Street property. And we have developers interested in acquiring and developing parcels on the city's western border. Let me be very clear that the city will always work cooperatively and aggressively with any potential developer, always with the best interest of the community in mind. As a city and as a council, we will continue to engage openly and honestly with the people we represent. The late governor of Texas, Ann Richards, once said that life isn't fair, but government must be. That's why we will continue to hold town hall forums and will report openly and honestly on issues and policies that we are considering. For those who do not use the C-Click-Fix app, I would encourage you to do so. I would also encourage citizens to sign up for our Celine Scene email blast and connect with the city on Facebook and Twitter. Finally, you will soon be noticing some improvements to the city's website, which will make it much easier to navigate. As I said two years ago, a central goal of mine is to encourage people to participate in their community. And if you're not involved, I hope you will consider serving your community as a member of a city board or commission, homeowners association, service club, church community, or our very own Main Street organization, which is currently planning some exciting initiatives. My council colleagues will notice that I have increased the representation on the Arts and Culture Commission because I believe it's in the best interest of our community to see this group mature and flourish in the years to come. It is also my hope to work with them and other interested parties to increase the visibility and awareness of the Bixby Marionette Collection, a majority of which is currently stored at City Hall. I also know that the Resident Support Services Task Force will soon reconvene, a group charged with assisting and supporting those who, who, those who most need help. Excuse me. I hope they will, this, will, this work will inspire others in the Saline community a community that enjoys great affluence, by the way, to find ways to support those who are struggling. Clearly, Celine has accomplished uh, and plans, clearly Celine's accomplishments and plans for the future would be impossible without the dedicated and hardworking volunteers, city staff, and department heads, and a very talented group of returning council members who dedicate so much of their time and effort to making Celine a special place. I want to thank Dean Gearbaugh, David Rhodes, Jim Roth, Terry Saibo Koenig, and Linda Tahar. Specifically, I want to thank Linda Tahar for serving as Mayor Pro Tem these past two years. Her thoughtful, reasoned approach has been greatly beneficial to me personally, as well as the city as a whole. And I know that David Rhodes will do an exceptional job in this position in the coming years. I also want to welcome our newest council member, Janet Dillon, who I know will bring a fresh, new perspective, and we expect great things. Clearly, an exceptional city emphasizes a wide array of key areas crucial to this community's well-being. And, and that's been Celine's approach these past two years, and it will continue to be our approach moving forward. I continue to believe that through bold, decisive leadership, we can confront our challenges head-on and emerge a stronger, more focused community. And yes, I still believe that Celine's best days are ahead of us. Thank you. May God bless you. And God bless Celine. Thank you very much, my friends. And of course, you're welcome to stay for the, uh, the rest of the meeting here this evening, which will be relatively short. Or if you'd like to, uh, to make your escape, for lack of a better way to articulate it, you're welcome to do so as well. And please help yourself to some more refreshments uh, as you leave the, the, uh, the chambers this evening. At this time, we move on to citizen comments on agenda items. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested, but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. No citizen comments, OK? Uh, before we approve the consent agenda this evening, uh, you will notice in front of you that you have an updated memorandum 
related to my appointments to the various boards and commissions. There are a few um, additions to that document this evening, including, I believe, an alternate to the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as an additional member on the Arts and Culture Commission. Okay? So please make note of that. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, any item may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Is there a motion? Move to approve and submit it. Thank you, Councilmember Rhodes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Saibo Koenig. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as distributed signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Aye. Say the motion carries unanimously. We only have one new business item this evening. It's uh, new business item 1507, appointment of Mayor Pro Tem for 2015. This will be a motion to appoint Council Member David Rhodes to serve as Mayor Pro Tem for the year 2015. So moved. Moved by Council Member Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Any discussion? Well, let me just say, as I uh, addressed in my State of the City address, Mr. Rhodes will, will do an outstanding job, but I want to thank uh, current Mayor Pro Tem Linda Tahar for her, her two years of service. She, she performed, uh, a, well, she exceeded expectations. She did an outstanding job as she does with, with everything she, she, she takes on. Um, and again, I, I'm personally indebted and I think the whole city is as well. So thank you for your service, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Um, if there's nothing further, it's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Tahar to appoint David Rhodes to serve as Mayor Pro Tem. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. We move on to discussion items, commission, committee, and task force reports from council <coughs> members. Are there any, uh, Mayor Pro or Mr. Hart, excuse me. You'll have to practice that. Um, yes, the Arts and Culture Committee met earlier today, um, and or we organized for the year. Um, the chair for this year uh, will be Cindy Baxter. She was chair last year as well, and uh, vice chair will be Aramene Pinero. Um, and we are continuing a couple of projects that we started last year. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Additional committee, commission, or task force reports from council members? No? Okay. Reports or other announcements? Mr. Rhodes? Thank you, Mayor Marl. Um, I did want to announce that on uh, January the 22nd, which is a Thursday at 6.30 in the evening, there will be a crowdfunding seminar put on here in council chambers by a, um, a group that has been hired by the county to go around to the cities. They've been in Ann Arbor and Dexter already, and now they're coming to Saline. This uh, crowdfunding is made possible by a new act that was passed by the state of Michigan legislature the uh, early part of last year, and it provides a method for folks who um, don't necessarily have a lot of money but would like to invest and support their local businesses, so it's a way to do that. And um, I would encourage anyone who is either interested in making an investment, which can be as small as two or three hundred dollars, uh, or if you're an entrepreneur and you're thinking of starting a business, um, or if you have an existing business and you're thinking of expanding it and you may need some more financing, I would uh, appreciate it. I would support your coming to that event on January 22nd. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Additional uh, reports or announcements? I have actually two, and, and the, the latter I'll, I'll let Mr. Campbell uh, address. Uh, the first, and you're welcome to take a look at this letter, it's dated uh, the 22nd of December 2014, but I received a very gracious letter um, in my mailbox today from Doug Elfring, the president of the Saline Area Historic Society, um, thanking the city for all of its um, support and um, cooperation over the past year, um, and then presenting us with our 2015 professional membership um, certificate. So just wanted to make everyone aware of that. Um, obviously there are a number of people in the audience this evening as well as uh, members of the dais who, uh, who are active in this group, but it's an outstanding organization. They do a lot to preserve and promote um, our history and uh, our community and uh, we, uh, we look forward to partnering and uh, cooperating with them in the, in the future. Um, the second relates to the Michigan Avenue makeover. Um, and as many of you know, and I addressed this in my State of the City address, um, we've got to make some decisions in, in relatively short order here, and there are a number of, uh, of issues that are still in flux. Um, the process is 
pretty fluid at this juncture. Um, but after speaking with the city manager earlier this afternoon, uh, I believe there might be some value and merit in scheduling an additional meeting. Um, and I guess if you're comfortable, Mr. Camp, I'll turn it over to you at this time to explain what we're thinking and when and see if there's consensus um, from the dais to, to schedule that. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as Mayor Marl just mentioned, uh, and as you all know up here, that uh, we continue to, to move at a f fairly feverish uh, pace as these types of projects typically go, because typically you have a couple years to plan and move forward, and, and of course we don't have that uh, um, when um, MDOT came to us this past August and said, hey, we want to move the project up two years. So have been uh, diligently working. I have a, uh, we have a, a, a work group, a design work group, that has staff and uh, uh, Main Street folks, um, and then also URS, and um, and we're also working with with MDOT to pull together from the comments from from the the open house and such, um, and we actually had a meeting on the 23rd of December, and bringing them close together. There's still still some things that need some decisions that need to be made, and but but certainly bringing it together and, and first for proposal. You also may recall we'll be applying for a, it's called the TAP grant, federal dollars, um, administered through uh, MDOT for the streetscape portion uh, of the project. And so um, the thought is that um, we would like to bring, have a special work session, a work meeting with council on the 13th of this month um, at, um, I'm assuming, say 6.30. Uh, to talk in detail, so can uh, ask questions, uh, make comments, uh, um, and so as we polish this up to present at a, another spe special regular meeting um, for council to make a decision, because you may recall council doesn't, t doesn't typically make decisions um, at the work meeting, that's more of an educational component, and then at, during the regular meetings, they make the decisions. So, and we try and do our very best not to provide you educational information, and then an hour or two later, ask you to make a decision. Uh, and this is certainly a very, very critical and long-lasting um, uh, decision on your behalf. Um, and so it's it's um, uh, very critical, important for staff to to be able to give you all the appropriate information. So that's what we would like to do, um, um, is have the special work session uh, on the 13th of January, the special uh, meeting, business meeting, um, on the 20th. Uh, and the reason for that is that the TAP grant application is due on the 26th. And so not a lot of time, unfortunately, um, and there's certainly there's a lot of things um, continuing once that is submitted there'll be a lot of work continuing on but maybe that is such a fevered pitch um, and also there's a, um, you may also may recall um, there is the uh, Michigan Ave makeover uh, task force that's a partnership with Celine Main Street folks and um, we will have the, the f next meeting uh, for that is actually going to be this Thursday uh, this even, Thursday evening. So um, that's what staff is proposing. Certainly happy to answer any questions. Let's start with that. Are there any questions for City Manager Campbell regarding um, the, the recommendation that, that, that he just articulated on behalf of myself and staff? No, then let's start with, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping there's, there's almost immediate consensus on this. Does anyone object to having a, a work meeting on the 13th or, a, or let me take a step back, a work meeting and then a, a, a um, an actual additional meeting where decisions would be made? The date of that additional meeting would be? Well, we were initially proposing the meeting where decisions would be made would most likely be on the 20th, um, the meeting where we would have more of a dialogue and a discussion and the opportunity to, to discern a number of things would be on the 13th, which would be a week from tomorrow. I have um, meetings on both of those particular <laughs> Tuesdays. But I was wondering, would it be possible to substitute the Michigan Avenue work meeting for the ordinance review update, which is scheduled for the 12th? Yeah. Since that's a work meeting we already have scheduled? No, I'm trying to think. How will we something? No, well, we were, we were trying to think, because that was initially. David, do you recall, since you're on our design crew, crew through the Main Street, I'm trying to remember, was there something? I don't think that we had set 
Uh, tempted to set just uh, recommended that we have a council work session. We cer yeah, I mean, we certainly could have that. I mean, the, we may, depending on the length. I mean, because you you know we could start at six, and so you so an hour and a half, and it, that may be enough time. I you know, uh, time will tell. But but certainly, yeah. We, I mean, if that if if that needs to happen, then get everybody here. Well, I, I think that, to, I think that would work. And in, in fact. Um, from the conversation that Mr. Campbell and I had today, it's increasingly likely that um, the initial set of recommendations and policy changes that are going to come out of the Code and Ordinance Review Task Force um, probably will not be entertained and discussed until our first meeting in February anyways. And that's when our legal counsel is, is able to attend and participate. And as a staff liaison to that group, I think it's absolutely imperative that he be, be present right. to provide some context and history. Um, so I'm very amenable to Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Rhodes' suggestion to meet on the uh, 12th, which would be prior to our meeting next week. Um, I would suggest because of the number of issues that need to be discussed and because of their complexity, meeting at six, if people are able to do that. Ms. <coughs> Seibel, can you be comfortable with that? Yes, that would be about my preference over the Kay. 13th. Mr. Gearbaugh? I'm fine. Okay, Mr. Rhodes, you made yes. the recommendation, so I know you're fine with it. Uh, Ms. Tahar? Yes, um, that the 12th would be fine. I, I sh do need to say for the business meeting on the 20th, I will not be able to attend. Okay, let me, uh, let me stick so, to the 12th okay. right now, um, but I appreciate that. Ms. Dillon, are, would you be able to yes. come at, uh, at 6 p.m. on the, the 12th? Okay, so we're set for the 12th then. Um, it'll be a work meeting. Obviously, we could reach consensus, but no formal decisions will be made, and that will begin promptly at 6. We'll provide some sort of light dinner, um, and I'll work with the clerk to make sure that that happens. Um, if we were to schedule a additional meeting, special meeting, to, to actually make decisions and, and formalize some action, um, Ms. Tahar says she cannot make the 20th. Um, and Mr. Rhodes, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Rhodes, indicated he has another meeting that night as well. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I also have a conflict that night. You also have a conflict that night. Okay. Um, about Monday the 19th. That's, that's MLK, uh, Day. MLK Day. Day. Holiday. What about that Wednesday? What about the following day, the 21st? That's Martin Luther King Day. Not the, tw no, the 21st. The, is the, the 19th. The 19th is, is the holiday. Correct. 19th is Monday. Yeah, so the 21st, which would be Wednesday. Is that a planning commission night? No, it's, it's the an, third. It's an environmental commission night. Okay. Right? That's okay. Okay. <laughs> so he's something. the good. Could 21st work? 21st works for me. Work for you, Ms. Saibo Koenig? Yes. Okay. You, Mr. Gearbaugh? If we started earlier, Mr. Rhodes, you could probably at, at least attend a portion of the portion. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mayor Pro or Council, I'm, I'm a creature of habit. I apologize. Yes. I'll get this right by the next meeting. Um, would you be able to make the, the 21st? No, that entire week wouldn't be possible. So I think you should arrange whatever you need to arrange without okay. considering my schedule. Okay. And we can certainly. Um, Subsequent to our meeting next Monday, if you had right. thoughts, suggestions, or comments you wanted to make part of the public record, you and I could certainly yes. talk or you could provide them in writing. Yep. Okay. Yes. Miss Dillon? Yes. I'm okay. Fine. All right. So um, let's schedule the 21st. Could we meet at 6? Yep. 6? Mm -hmm. Okay. They give you an hour at least. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. The only thing I'd like to have make sure that this meeting's well publicized specifically because of this being where we may be making decisions on sure. it. Sure. And then it's an off night. <clears throat> Make sure tomorrow it's added to the calendar online. And of course you need to, to, to uh, post it to, to comply with, with state statutes. Okay. Um, make sure that maybe Chris disseminates it on, on Facebook as well. Maybe there's something on the home page of the website even. I think that's the problem. Sometimes when we put things on the calendars, you have to go to the calendar page to find it. So right. maybe, be, I, I agree with Council Member Gearbaugh, because of how important and paramount this is, maybe putting something on the home page. And the post and the... Yeah, and yeah. I'm assuming our friends in the press the corps could also habit. assist us in disseminating the information. And of course, Council Members, if you wanted to share it on your personal Facebook pages, um, that would be uh, helpful as well. Okay, so both beginning at 6 p.m., um, a work meeting next Monday, preceding our regular meeting and then the 21st, which is a Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, and both will take place here in, uh, in council chambers. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Um, any other reports or announcements? No, then we'll move on to public comment. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question <coughs> to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested, but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. No? Oh, please. Mary Lavronis, 373 West Bennett. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to, since none of you did, uh, call attention to the meeting tomorrow night about strategic Planning, is that still on? Yep. Okay, yep. at the library. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you could. Absolutely. Fill that um, out. Let me, real quick, I uh, appreciate that, Mary. Let me make sure there are no additional public comments. No, actually, that was the next thing I was going to announce after I asked for any other business to come before council this evening. I don't suspect there is any. So, yes, tomorrow night, January 6, is our strategic planning wrap up meeting at 6.30 p.m. at the district, Esling District Library in the Brecken Room. That is open for the public. You're welcome to attend. However, subsequent to that meeting, when our um, strategic plan is finalized, that will be made available on our website here at City Hall, and we'll be sure to promote it as well. But uh, Mary's point is well taken. For those who participated in um, that workshop about a month ago now, um, and if you're interested in attending, uh, we would welcome that. Again, that's tomorrow evening, 6.30, um, in the Brecken Room at Saline District Library. And then next Monday, we have a regular meeting at 7.30, a work meeting at 6, and then our next regular council meeting will be on the 2nd of February with a special meeting scheduled now for the 21st. Um, and we already excused the absence of Council Member Roth, so we can proceed with a motion to adjourn at... 8, 10 p.m. Move to adjourn. Thank you, Councilwoman Seibel Koenig. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>